Welcome back to another episode of Laser Engraving 911. So today we're not going to do a full deep dive into the F1 Ultra, but we are going to do a deep dive into the conveyor belt option that comes with the Ultra. So if that sounds like something you want to get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out, because we're about to get into some conveyor belt action on Laser Engraving 911. So first things first, when you get this, one of the things I like about Xtools is it's gonna come with everything you need, including the little tool to put all this stuff on. The instructions are pretty straightforward. They ask you to flip it over, put this bracket on here, and then on the next one, they're gonna have you put another bracket on the actual Ultra bed, and that's going to allow these two to lock into a very specific place. We'll do that now, and we'll just follow the instructions. We're gonna be working with this part right here. We're gonna flip this over, that stuff out of the way and there it is there is the two screw holes right here and they are asking us to put it on this way with these two screw holes facing out according to the diagram so we're just gonna put that there grab a couple of screws and it looks like they're all the same size so that's cool and you don't want to press too hard on this underside here underside was not meant to hold any weight we'll just get these little screws going right in here screw one Screw two, make sure it's nice and straight before you crank it down. And there is that first step. Next thing they want you to do is flip it back over because we're done. That's bitty, pretty <laughs> bitty. That's pretty much it for what we need to do on the bottom side. The next step, we're gonna work with this piece right here. And they want us to put this right in the middle here, right there, boom, boom right in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. Super basic. I do not have the Ultra on right now. I'm just hooking up the conveyor. So now this is really important. I'm sure you could get away with, if you really knew what you were doing, not using these brackets and just kind of place the conveyor underneath there. But I think this is really the best way to do it is to use the brackets. So now that you have that on there with this little lip facing up, the last step is there's two more screws. X-Tool logo goes in the front. We're gonna just lay this underneath. And if you look right here, it just slides right into that groove that we just did. And we're going to put those last two screws right there to lock it in place. You want to screw that in nice and tight. And now the conveyor belt and the F1 Ultra are one. They have now become one. So this is now completely connected to the Ultra. Next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and plug in the data cable. So you've got the data cable that came with it. Plug that in right there. It's got a little symbol on the back of the conveyor belt and a little symbol to match up right here of the one you're supposed to put it in. So now we are connected. All right, so now that we've got the conveyor belt connected, let's go ahead and dive into the software and we'll get into how that works. Now that we've put together the conveyor belt, we're gonna get over and show you how to set up your first job. What we're gonna be running through the F1 Ultra is these stainless steel polished watch backs. So we're gonna put a logo on the back of all these different watch backs using the batch processing feature and the conveyor belt. First, before we get into focusing to these and getting these set up in the laser, I'm gonna show you how to set it up using the XCS software. So why don't we come over here and you can see how I do that. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to open up the Xtool Creative Space software. And keep in mind, we already have the conveyor belt plugged in to the F1 Ultra. And so everything's already on. We are connected to the machine. Right here, this is what you're gonna be presented with. We're gonna click new project. And this is what you're gonna be presented with. And we're gonna go over here and we're gonna pick which mode that we want to use. And we're gonna use conveyor batch. So as soon as you do that, it prompts you to start the process and it gives you a little warning. Batch fill may not be necessarily accurate for materials that are reflected, perforated, looped or hollow, etc. And you can read more on that. And we are going to be doing an extremely reflective piece of metal, but I'm gonna show you a little trick that we came up with that actually helps the vision system recognize this a little bit better. So stay tuned for that. Hey there. 
Sorry to interrupt the video, but did you know that I offer one-on-one -on -one laser engraving business consulting? If you've been asking yourself questions like, which laser machine do I buy? How do I promote my brand new laser engraving business? Or how do I utilize the laser engraving machine that I already have? Then booking a private session with me is what you've been looking for. Cut to the front of the line using my 10 years plus experience in the laser engraving industry and get the answers you need right now. I've listed a link in the description below so you can book your one-on-one -on -one session with me today. All right, I'm done. I'll let you get back to watching me. See ya. The first thing we're gonna do, it prompts you to place the item in here so it can take a picture of it. And since this is a reflective material, one of the things that we found was really helpful is actually we're gonna put a little dusting of some talc powder on the reflective material. And this is just something that I've already been doing here in my shop for a long time, so I can see targeting, red targeting lasers. But we're just gonna give it a little, a little dusting of some talc, just like that, to mitigate that issue with it having problems with reflective material. You're gonna place it underneath the engravable area and you're gonna make sure that your two red and blue lines are overlapping each other. If you weren't in focus, it would look like this. So I just purposely went out of focus, but we wanna make sure that once we place it in there, we're in focus and I'm just using the focus button on this control panel right here to set my focus. And then we're gonna close this just enough as much as we can so we get maximum fume extraction as the little parts are rolling underneath. So now back over to the XCS software, we're gonna hit refresh. So we hit the refresh button, the camera will take a picture of what's going on in there. And just to give you an example of what this reflective part looks like without the talc powder on it, I'll put another one in there just for fun and I'll hit the refresh button. That's with no talc powder, that's with talc powder. It's a big difference. So there, we hit refresh. Now we have a sample of what we're gonna be sending through in batches. Next thing we wanna do is bring in the graphic that we're gonna use to engrave the back of the watch back. I've got some logos that I wanna use here. I'm gonna ungroup them because I don't wanna do all these. And I have this nice logo here. And the reason I left this outline here is to help me align to the object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it over here and you can hit Control plus plus to zoom in and I'm gonna just drag it over where I'd like it to land. And I'm using that outer line that I kept just to help me kind of align where I wanna be. And you can also use the arrow keys to make fine adjustments. I like it right there. Once I'm done using that outline, I'm just gonna get rid of it by highlighting it and hit delete. Delete. Now that we've got our logo right where we want, we're gonna click frame out material and it's gonna take you to the next step. And what this is doing is it's saying, hey, move or resize the bounding box to include the sample material. This makes material recognition more accurate. So it already recognized this part and it's doing a really good job at framing out the whole object. So I'm not actually going to make any adjustments to this because it did a really good job and I'm just gonna click save. One more thing I like to do with the graphic here is I'm gonna unite all this because for some reason the XCS likes to treat all these different parts of this SVG file as individual parts. So I'm just gonna hit unite and that way it united them all as one solid SVG. Okay, so what did we do? We put the material underneath there. We refreshed the screen. We dragged our logo in exactly where we want it on each item. And then we told it frame out materials, what they're calling it. Basically what it's doing is telling the computer what the object looks like, where everything is supposed to go. So it has a memory of what it's looking for and where the logo is supposed to go. So we told it all that information. The next thing we wanna do is we want to highlight the graphic and we want to click easy set panel which is going to give us options to what kind of laser do we want to use and we do not want to use the diode laser we want to use the fiber laser since this is metal and then we want to set our power and speed settings so i'm going to set this at 60 percent power what was the speed that we had it at 800. That was a setting that we found got a nice little frosted mark on the back of these watch backs. I'm going to set this at 800 and the lines per inch, I believe we left it at 100. The frequency we didn't mess with, but it's nice to know that you can adjust that there and we want to keep it at bi-directional. So now that we have that set, we've set the power 
in our settings. We can double check that by highlighting it again. And then now that we've set our settings, we've done our frame out, we're focused, we can then go ahead and hit process. Something's happening. <laughs> it went through this system, conveyor material, shoot material, recognize material. So it's recognized the object. The orientation that it shows, even though it's upside down, really doesn't matter because this is a circle. If it was a different type of material, I think it would orientate it appropriately to the way you set the sample and the framing up. So the last step, turn on your fume extractor. <laughs> and it's gonna get a little louder. We don't need much for this. And we'll get into the fume extractor that comes with X-Tool F1 Ultra on my full video. We've got our one sample in there. We're gonna let that go. We've got some other parts. We'll unwrap a few more of those. And remember, I still gotta dust them. That was important because it helps it recognize it easier. Not too much, it's a little dusting. It's really not that much. Poof, poof. I'm gonna set those on there and we'll just do those for now, but we could get more ready. This is not like a super slow setting. So we'll set those on there. And when you're setting these on, the ones that are getting ready to go in there, you don't wanna be setting them out here, right? There's an area that can be engraved. So you wanna get them kind of in this area like that for best results. Got our part in there. We've got some things that are ready to get engraved. You could actually set them a little closer. One of the things I wanna mention is that the software and the F1 Ultra, this is still a beta version. So they've been very transparent with me. They are constantly working on the software, constantly adding improvements to the vision system. They're relying on content creators like us to give them feedback and test all these features out. Keep that in mind when I'm showing you this. We found that a couple times that we've set this up that it it's not missed the object, but just ignored the object and went through without engraving it. But we were able to just grab it on the other side, feed it through again, and it caught it the second time. So I'm not sure if this is gonna do it this time or if it's gonna nail all of them, but we're about to find out. So let's go ahead and fire it up. The last thing you wanna do is hit start up here, which actually doesn't start the job, but you heard that beep. It actually sends the job over and it tells you I'm ready. So now that it's ready, we'll go ahead and hit the green button to start the project. It's gonna do the first one first, and then it's gonna bring in the other four. Here we go. And you can see over here on the software, it's looking right now. It's seeing you can recognize the material, and then it's, once it's recognized, it's gonna start engraving. And there it goes. Boom, <laughs> goes on to the next one. Very cool. And you see the talc powder isn't affecting the engraving at all. It's just helping the vision system recognize those extremely shiny objects a little easier. There it comes. <laughs> that is really neat. All right, so here's what we came up with. So let's go ahead and give these a little wipe off. I would say that's a pass. I would say for the most part, they're pretty centered. Centered enough for production quality and the marking is consistent. All right, so now that we finished engraving those watchbacks, let's go ahead and run this thing through its paces and engrave a bunch of other items, metal, wood, whatever, starting with this wooden key.
All right, so here's my final thoughts on the X-Tool conveyor belt beta version, which is what I have here. I think it did a fantastic job at identifying all these different materials that we threw at it. It was actually kind of fun to put things in at different angles and different positions and see how it handled it. What I'd like to see before the final release, and I know that X-Tool is working diligently every day and every night on the different aspects of the software and the vision system. What would be really nice to see is them to improve the accuracy of identifying the different shapes. Also the ability to maybe advance the conveyor belt manually if you need to. Also, I'm not sure if we explored that, there might be a feature in there about how many times that it goes through, that it doesn't see anything, that it automatically stops. A couple other things that I think could be improved on is the accuracy at where the logo is placed. It seemed to most of the time get the logo nice and square where it was on the original sample that we set in and then other times it was a little bit off to the left or the right and I think that over time that's just gonna get more and more improved with the software and I know that Xtool will take care of that this is going to be a huge time saver and a game changer for anyone doing production work when it comes to adding serial numbers to something like if someone brings you a bunch of parts where they just need the same serial number added on every single part any kind of QR codes that need to be added to a machine part, I feel like this is gonna be a huge benefit once they dial in all the accuracy settings. And overall, I think that this conveyor belt has great potential once it gets out of beta stage. I can see this being a huge benefit to a lot of different laser engraving businesses. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek into the beta version of the conveyor belt on the F1 Ultra. Yes, you can buy the conveyor belt as a standalone on pre order right now it's about $500 but if you haven't gotten the whole package here it is currently for sale and they are currently shipping out soon and I've listed a link in the description below it is an affiliate link so when you use that link it doesn't cost you anything but it does help support the channel because Xtool gives us a little kickback for everybody that uses that link I will be doing a massive deep dive into the whole F1 Ultra system in the few weeks coming up but right now I just was so excited to get into the conveyor belt system. I wanted to bring this video to you as soon as possible. So until next time, we'll see you around on Laser Engraving 911.